hello students in this lesson you will learn about system memory what is a system memory a system memory is any physical devices which holds data for temporary manner or a permanent manner okay there are two types of memories available primary memory and secondary memory primary memory is a is a system memory that holds that have less memory as compared to secondary memory secondary memory that you can see is hard disk ssd cd drive or uh, will will have a large amount of memories we can store we can store a large amount of data in this secondary memory as the primary memory will have a less amount of data its memory will be less as compared uh, compared to the secondary memory okay and the primary memory is the main memory in the computer systems okay the primary memory is classified into two rom memory and ram memory let us see rom first rom memory means read only memory that means we can only read the data data written on that memory okay but we can rewrite or erase this memory from uh, certain exception is there we will come over there okay the ram the rom means read only memory and this rom is again classified into four ways one is the first one is p rom p rom means programmable read only memory it can program program once if the memory ic is blank then we can program with uh, program with the programmer once cannot be erasable okay clear p rom and second one is ep rom that is erasable programmable read only memory this can be the the program in the the memory that is written on the memory ic can be erased in a certain manner if the large amount of radiation is applied to that memory at uh, that memory will erased that is e rom ep rom ep rom is erasable programmable read only memory the third one is ee prom or e square prom that is erasable electrically erasable programmable read only memory that is we can electrically erase the program that is written on the i ic can be erased and can we can rewrite the other program okay the the main example for this e prom ic is bios that is used in the computer systems you know that the cmos battery and the bios ics are this a best example for e square prom and the other one is flash rom flash rom is also a read only memory but we can erase the data whatever uh, we copied we can copy and erase the, erase the data several times without any limitation that is flash rom the other, other name of flash rom is pen drive but pen drive is also classified in the secondary memory because pen pen drive is is pen drive will have a large amount of memory we can uh, store a lot of data on the pen drive so the pen drive comes with rom and the secondary memory actually the uh, technical is uh, name is rom only this flash rom is read only memory but we can erase it in a certain manner okay then the next one is ram it is this is very important section that uh, the ram is known as random access memory random access memory means we can access the data randomly that is which is stored on the memory balloon that is known as uh, balloons and the memory balloons if you store the data we can access or copy the data and copy the data and write the data randomly this is called random 
access memory and this ram is volatile what is volatile volatile means if the ram can hold the data temporarily only okay if the if the the supply is necessary to work for the ram the ram works as a memory when the supply is present if the supply is absent or the supply is uh, driven then the the all the memory all the data in the ram memory will be erased and it cannot be restored that is the ram that's why the ram memory is called volatile and the rom is non volatile non volatile means if if you write a, a data in this memory and if there is no supply then the memory will not be erased so we can retain the memory and we can uh, use the memory and you, you can use the this memory one by one or it cannot be uh, erased if the supply is gone ram need the basic thing is ram need supply for working as a ram rom don't need a supply as a working as a rom okay and the random access memory is a volatile memory and it should have a supply for working as a memory and ram is divided into two static ram and dynamic ram static ram is a one type of ram that will have will we have a speed more than dynamic ram so we cannot manufacture or produce static static ram for the system static, static ram as a system ram Be, uh, as as it is very expensive to make the static ram is only used as a cache memory static ram is only used as a cache memory cache memory as we you know that cache memory is a type of less low memory which is embedded in the processor okay you know uh, the the maximum amount of the cache memory in the system is maximum 3 mp 1 mp to 3 mp 3 mp cache memory is available in the processor means cpu static ram is speed is very high but this is dynamic ram and this is and the speed of this memory is low as compared to the static ram but it can be produced with less money so it's not expensive it is this is inexpensive so the manufacturer produces the system memory as a dynamic ram dynamic ram is again the next version of the dynamic ram is sd ram synchronous dynamic ram and this is some this is the uh, the latest version of the sd ram sd ram and this sd ram will be the fast enough uh, as compared to the dynamic ram dynamic ram is the old version and the next version is synchronous dynamic ram okay then we will this, this sd ram is then classified into four type of rams ddr1 ddr2 ddr3 and ddr3 l and ddr for ddr stand for double data rate as a cpu sends a clock signal to the ram for co for copying and writing the data to and from the ram so if one clock means one the data data can be stored or data can be read when a one one data mean one one uh, one bit of one bit of data one bit of data means the minimum amount of data is one bit one bit of data we can read the one bit of data in the period of one cycle one cycle per seconds that is the clock signal the single the single clock signal will read the minimum data of one bit data but this ddr means double data rate means in a single 
period of cycle two bit of data will be accessed that is double data write already the sd ram will have only one bit one bit data per per cycle but this ddr is will access two bit of data in a, in one cycle so the data reading and writing is doubled and eventually the da the data speed will be increased so the first one is ddr1 and other name uh, we can simple call as ddr ram and the second one is ddr2 ram and this is ddr3 ram and ddr3 l is available and ddr4 is the latest version of the ram there is no difference between this ddr3 and ddr3 l ram that is it only applies for the minimum current consumption ddr3 will have 1.5 volt for the working voltage and ddr3 l will have only 1.3 volt as a volt working voltage this ddr3 will consume a less working voltage 3 l means low voltage okay you can also use the ddr3 ram in the ddr3 l slot as the only difference is the voltage consumption so we can vice versa use this ddr3 and ddr3 l the last one is ddr4 is the latest version of the ddr series and it is more speed as compared to the ddr1 ddr2 ddr3 and ddr3 l it is this the bandwidth will be very high and the latest um, latest amount of uh, the system that coming right now is employs ddr4 and it is little bit expensive okay let's move to the secondary memory what is a secondary memory secondary memory is known as known as a permanent memory that the if we stored we can store a large amount of data in this um, this permanent memory and it is also a non volatile memory that is it don't need a supply to retain the data that is written on the secondary memory okay the first one is hard disk that we all know that the system uses the hard disk to store the operating systems and our data without without hard disk the, uh, the system cannot boot and if if we need if we need if we need to write or install install any operating system the hard disk is required the latest version of the hard disk ssd that is solid state drive okay solid solid uh, solid state drive is also a type of uh, secondary memory and cd dvd rom is also a secondary memory the cd dvd is uh, uh, classified into two read only memory and read writing cds the other one is pen drive so this the same as flash rom flash rom is flash rom is also known as a pen drive okay this is also a rom but this comes as a secondary memory because it holds a large amount of data the other one is floppy drive floppy drive is uh, obsolete now that uh, we know that floppy drive is not coming uh, in this period it is very old uh, version of the store uh, the, what is this for the floppy driver as compared to this H hard disk and ssd is this floppy floppy drives only have 144 mp we can we can only store a 140 mp data in the floppy drive okay let us see okay this is the physical appearance and the physical diagram of the desktop ram this is ddr1 ram this is ddr2 ram this is ddr3 ram and this one is ddr4 ram in the rams we can see that there is a cut in the middle or the side of the this connection this 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 gold color is a connections output connections that is inserted in a dim slot that is ram slot in the motherboard of the 
computer okay this one is called notch and you can see that in ddr1 and ddr2 the notches are almost same as first appearance but it is not almost same it is incompatible to the incompatible to others because we cannot insert a ddr2 ram to the ddr1 slot because this notch will not allow to insert the ram into the, the uh, ram slot so it's not compatible okay ddr1 ddr2 and ddr3 is a little bit uh, different from uh, ddr1 and ddr2 and ddr4 also some uh, DDR4 also same as the DDR1 and DDR2 but it is very uh, different and the pin configuration is different. You can see there are, you can see there is much, much less pin in the DDR1 RAM and some more pins in the DDR2 and DDR3 also we can see the pin, con uh, the pin comp configuration is more and the DDR4 it's small small pins and it's the number of the pins will be more ddr3 and ddr3 3l are rams are same as we can interchange the ddr3 and ddr3 l ram so that's why i didn't mention the ddr3 l ram in this okay let's come to the other knowledge as how do we how do you identify that that the RAM that we have is a DDR1, DDR2, DDR3 or DDR4. First one we can see, we can identify from this notch. But as the DDR1 and DDR2 RAM is, the pin configuration is identical. So we cannot, we can be confused when we are using this DDR1 and DDR2. You can see that there is, there is the D the type of the RAM is mentioned on the RAM. This one, this is DDR, means DDR1. If, if it is only anything written as DDR, that, that means that RAM is, particular RAM is DDR1 RAM. You can see that this one DDR2, that is PC2. Some RAMs will have DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4 mentioned on the RAM, but some RAMs will have PC2, that is PC1 stands for DDR1, PC2 stands for DDR2, PC3 stands for DDR3 and PC4 stands for DDR4. This one is DDR3 and some companies will have PC3, okay, and PC4. Okay, then first the next next one is we should be very sure that all the bandwidth will is not same as all the all the any DD, we cannot insert the any ddr2 ram into slot because we should consider this number this 2gb is the capacity of the particular ram pc2 means type of the ram and this 5300u is the frequency of the this RAM okay this RAM uh, we can see that this is the 800 megahertz is the frequency and if it is 800 we return say 800 megahertz then the 800 megahertz is the maximum data that can be written or accessed from this RAM in one second this is the maximum data can be written or accessed from this RAM in one second. So if the 800 megahertz DDR1 RAM is in a system, so you, you, are, you need to upgrade the RAM, you consider this number. You, if if, the, if the, the, PC, the, the 2GB PC2 800 megahertz RAM you have, you cannot insert a, uh, this PC2 1300 megahertz it is not compatible and we will not get any uh, any video signal in the monitor that's why we need to consider we can 
if you see any 5 3 double zero u or if you see any 800 mega megahertz then it's a 800 megahertz ram if you see any 5 3 double zero or uh, uh, 1 to uh, 12800 u then you should divide this number into 8 if the 5 3 double zero u is divided then it is 800 megahertz divided by 8 you should uh, divide this 5 3 double zero u into 8 and you will get the 800 number so this this the particular ddr2 ram is 800, 800 megahertz frequency gram if it is 10200 then you should con you, you should divide that 10200 or 10600 divided by 8 and the what number is coming that is the frequency of that particular ram